Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I thought I'd have a go today at just um, filming, watering some pots. Um, as it happens, I'm only doing the holy clay pots today, but a pot's a pot. They, they, they get watered in the same method. The amount of feed and whatever might change dramatically depending on what's in the pot, but the method doesn't really change. Um, anybody who follows me knows that that's my fertiliser. Um, that's the MSU formula, which I am more than happy with and will continue to use as long as I have some. Now that tub um, is now about a third full. Um, and this is my second complete year using it, so it's lasting very well. Um, my problem will be when this does run out, and... Um, I'm going to have to do a bit of work on that. This came from the States, literally. Um, a friend, John Greco, <coughs> was in the States and said he could get hold of some, which he did. Um, I think he actually ordered it to get it to delivered to the hotel he was staying in. So he acquired it. Um, managed to get a tub full of white powder through customs without getting arrested. And um, it then arrived back in Spain and it was then posted on to me. So with the shipping charges and the cost of the tub, it worked out quite expensive relatively, but um, I'm going to get at least two, probably two and a half years out of this tub. So per orchid, over that period of time, the cost is negligible. Um, but I'm going to have to do some work because I now have to plan for that running out. Um, the only alternative for this in the EU is um, the uh, Akerns rain mix, which I have had some issues with in the past, um, but I know what those issues are, and I could probably circumvent them in the main. Um, I had some issues with burning roots on bare roots, um, uh, which I believe was a very high sulphur content. can't prove it, of course, but... Um, it didn't seem to affect the plants in pots that had their roots in stuff. It only seemed to affect the bare-rooted plants, and I did get some burning. And that was not at the recommended dose. That was at lower doses than that. Um, so if the worst comes to the worst, that's what I'll have to use, because it's the only formula, really, that'll, that's, that's going to work out of the packet with RO water, because obviously you need the calcium and magnesium added. Or you've got to add it separately, um, and I might look into that. But for the moment, that's what gets used. And I mix up a strong so stock solution in there. How strong it is is irrelevant, because until it gets poured in the RO water, I don't care how strong that is. I, I measure it here at the point it's about to go on the orchid, so this is irrelevant. It's just a strong stock solution in a black container to keep the light out that I keep it in the coolest place in the house, so dark and cool that's that <clears throat> in there at the moment that mix is um, 160 parts per million and the only thing in there is the MSU um, formula so um, I then measured the pH and this this watering I wanted to go down the low end of the pH so um, I measured it and it was 6.6 .6, which was not what, what I wanted now to lower pH you can spend an awful lot of money getting some chemical from somewhere like an aqua shop or a hydroponics shop and it'll be called pH down and you'll spend an awful lot of money on it or you can spend two quid on a pack of citric acid crystals yeah that costs two two pounds um, with free postage on eBay yeah that will be perfectly adequate to drop your pH down it's crystals you can see how big the bag is and what I do is I take out about 10 of those crystals, which is the end of a teaspoon, and mix it up with some RO water. And give it a good shake, make sure it's dissolved. And then I use that very weak solution to lower the pH when I need to, and I measure it with my TDS meter till I get it as I wanted it. That currently is 5.7, so it's the lowest I will ever go. Yeah, I never go any. Normally, I aim at the 5.8 mark if I'm on the lower end. If I'm up the higher end, I like a pH of around 6.3, 6.4, and I swap it around. That should ensure that everything that's in there 
is made available for the for, to the plants in at least an alternate watering because some of those um, elements go in better at lower pHs and some go in better at higher pHs but um, as I say that's 5.7 and a, a TDS of uh, 160. <clears throat> now what I used to do was mix up the water like that and use it. I share water, I don't recommend that but the, the amount of water I would waste is not acceptable so I share water and I used to water as many plants as I could with that water well if you think how many pots the water goes through when I'm getting near the end of it the sharing was at a high risk element washing bugs, washing scale off of the base of one plant into the water and then tipping it over the next four you know so that you can spread bugs sharing water you can spread, spread undesirable pathogens fungus spores um, bacteria sharing water is not recommended but I t I've always taken that risk it's what I've always done but now I de-risk it yeah so what I do now is this is in the lounge at the, well, in the dining room next to the door to the grow room so I just take out some of this and put it in there. Now I've only got a small amount. That'll only water three or four pots and it'll run out. Then I've got to go and get some more. So it's not getting shared anywhere near as much as the way I used to work. So I've de-risked it considerably. Instead of getting through perhaps 40 or 50 pots sharing water, I now get through three or four. I mean if they're small pots it might be eight or nine but that's not going to last long. Yeah, So that's de-risked that element of it and now I can't water, get pots off shelves and, and, and show the watering what I do without setting the camera up on a tripod so I'll do that and then as I'm moving around I'll try not to kick the tripod over and splash me camera. <laughs> right I'll be back. Okay the first one I'm going to have a go at is the only holy clay pot I've got that gets treated differently and uh, that's why that's actually a bulbophyllum and the content in there the mix is quite heavy on the moss and smaller bark um, and there's uh, quite a few plant elements in there um, there were two pieces of what was quite a large plant that had bloomed a few times and three back bulbs that I potted up that all decided to shoot out there in there as well so, so there's effectively five base plants in there but three of them are an old bulb and a new growth and the others are pushing on new growths in various places and roots all over the place now because this is a bulb of film in a clay pot it needs watering more often than the others that need the wet dry cycle yeah so this one I keep my eye on and this is um, this is my little bit of um, muscle strengthening this is a heavy pot I'm holding it with two hands now which is comfortable now I've got to let go and water so I'm now holding the thing in my left hand and it's flipping heavy and then excuse the clanging I just chuck water in it and I mean I chuck water in it and this will give you uh, chosen this one first for a good reason. Basically I just keep watering, water's going straight through and out the bottom. I've then got to turn it round to do the other side because it's such a large bowl and get some more in round this side and I make sure I get plenty round the edge of the media because this is a soft clay pot and it absorbs quite a bit of water. And I've already run out of water and I've done one pot. Yeah? <laughs> so I'm not sharing water on this one, am I? That got fresh water and was watered. The only sharing involved was what ran out the bottom went back in the top. Yeah? Um, and then I'll just put that to one side to drip a bit and move on to the next one. But <coughs> because I've run out of water, I now need to reach in here without knocking the tripod over and get another glass full. Oh. 
top that up. I know there was a little tiny bit left in there, but not much. And then, once we get to the smaller ones, it speeds up a bit. This is the um, Rodwood Guesier Diana, um, which is an Oncidium type. So, nonetheless, it seems to grow reasonably well with a wet dry cycle, but it certainly doesn't like staying dry too long. This has recently come off a mount and gone in a holy clay pot. And since then it's done nothing. So I'm waiting. It has bloomed. I'm just waiting for new growths on that now. So that's another one done. I'll just grab something else. This one's slightly different. This is a Catlia, obviously. <laughs> and um, its new growth has a sheath, which at the moment has um, got no buds in, maybe soon. Um, this is a split, a division. Somebody else had the other half of it. And um, this has got quite a good root system, a lot of which is outside the pot. So again, the watering process is the same. I don't muck about when I water. If I'm gonna water something, it gets wet. And I mean wet. This is large bark in here. And none of the holy clay pots have had their plants in that long. So relatively speaking, bearing in mind this bark totally dries in between waterings, or it certainly does on these types, um, it's going to last for a very long time because it doesn't stay wet. But because it's bone dry when I water it, it takes a lot of water to re-wet it. So I just keep going, I just keep pouring water in, and any surface roots get water poured over them until I see them starting to go green. Now I've got the ones outside the pot to worry about, so I water them as well. And I mean this one has a few outside, uh, not too many, some of the others have got a lot more than that. So you can see the water stops dripping quite quickly. The bark is now very wet, so is the pot, that's quite important. Yeah? Now these holy clay pots that came from Rachel are rock hard, they do not absorb much water at all. But what I do when I've finished is I carefully put the tray back underneath so that I don't sit the pot physically on the roots. I make sure they're in the tray, not buried under the pot getting squashed. And then I put a drop more in the tray. So those roots that are in the tray are now in water. That's nearly water culture, isn't it? <laughs> for, for about half an hour or so before they soak it all up. But any roots that are right around the bottom of the pot that are capable of having that done, I do it, yeah? And that gives those, what were aerial roots, time to soak up an awful lot of water um, before it runs out, yeah? That's that one, I'll do one more. What should I do next, what can I get at? Um, uh, oh, I can't do the big one, I won't have enough water. No, we'll just do this one. <coughs> this one's actually in bloom at the moment, although it's not a very good bloom. This is the um, Cattleya Harrisoniana. And this one, the rhizome is completely out of the media. It was such a straggly plant, I just couldn't get this in the pot any other way. And it did have some roots, so some roots went down in the pot when I started. But since then it's grown, uh, these are the older roots, yeah? They've all gone down in there and done branching and come out of the pot. But the new growth here, the one with the bloom on, um, actually pushed out quite a lot of new roots. So the white ones are the new ones. And um, this is a soft clay pot. So the pot takes a fair bit of moisture and soaks in a fair old bit. And again, I just keep chucking water on until I see the roots going green. Now the old roots go green very, very quickly. This particular Cattleya, this one, not all of them, has what I call new root syndrome. And the new white roots will not hydrate. You can sit them in water for a long time before they go green, which might not be a bad idea, but I don't, do, I don't dunk and soak these pots that way. I would rather water them more often. Because this is a soft pot, I'm now going to water the pot. Yeah, so I'm going to get the pot wet. And then, 
because it's a very soft clay pot, to give the uh, roots inside the pot time to hydrate, again I'm going to put some water in the tray, that's not for the plant that water, that water's for the pot, to keep the pot wet long enough for the roots to be able to absorb their moisture before the pot starts sucking the moisture out of the media. So uh, that'll do, I just wanted to show the physical watering and the way that the shared water is effectively de-risked. Because I mean so far this water has watered three pots and it's now so low that I can't get enough to use so I'll have to get some more. And if I see any discoloration or anything in the water, which doesn't happen with these types of orchids, but it does with some of the others, all I do is dump that on the floor and start again with fresh water that's clean. Yeah. Now, if there's any runoff coming out of these pots, again, it will be minimal because it, the water's only been through a few pots, and I do check that on occasions. I'll water some pots, get the TDS meter out, and sometimes it's gone up a little bit, <clears throat> but not much. So there may be a little runoff. But then I flush quite often. That clears them out. <laughs> and um, the effect of running the water through the pots can alter the pH. And I've seen it happen, and it usually drops. It <laughs> doesn't go up, it usually drops. Bearing in mind this is at a very low pH, I wouldn't want that to happen more than 0.1. And so far, every time I've rechecked TDS, although it may drop a bit, it is only a very small amount. Yeah? The time it changes most dramatically is in pots that are in the small bark with quite a lot of sphagnum moss that have been around a while. So the media is not fresh. It's not breaking down or going old, but it does tend to be a bit more acidic because of what it's made up of and the fact that those type of orchids would be the ones that need to stay moist. Well, the longer the media stays moist, the more chance it has to react with the moisture and lower the pH. So I'm aware of all these things and I make adjustments accordingly. And now my hands are soaking wet and I can't turn the camera off. Use my portable towel, endearingly known as my jeans. And I'll see you next time. So I, I just wanted to show physically doing it. It's all very well talking about all this stuff. but um, So if I water an, an orchid in a pot, I water it. I don't muck about. You know, it doesn't get a trickle around the edge of the pot or anything daft like that. If I'm going to water it, I water it because it needs it. And it's not going to get watered again until it gets to that point. And with these, it'll be when they're dry. In the winter, they'll stay dry a while before they get watered. Yeah? So the wet-dry cycle in the growing season is short. As short as I can get it. As soon as I see these pots are dry, I water them again. Yeah? But I need them to dry first. In the winter, they will take longer to dry. And because the plants aren't growing much, they won't use as much. Yeah? And they've got a shorter day, so they're not growing as much. So the dry part of the wet-dry cycle is quite a long time in the winter. I can go three or four days with them in their dry state before I water them again. But when I water them, I still water them well and completely rehydrate the root system on up into the plant. But if they're not using it at the same sort of rate, it doesn't need to happen as often. So that's holy clay pots. The principle is exactly the same for the other types of pots. The, you know, the method, everything is exactly the same. The difference is the frequency. The, the frequency to water the holy clay pots comes around a lot more often than the plastic pots because the pot is aiding the drying. And most of them are in the very large bark, so they dry pretty quick. So that's that, just a quick go with uh, showing watering instead of just talking about it. Um, may not be helpful for, for many, but at least you've seen it. And if anybody qu asks any questions about that sort of thing, I can just point them at this video now. All self-contained. See you next time.